Jews are people too, dude. Welcome back to the show. How we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back, Adam and Steve, our podcast too. Anything you want to say? I, uh, <laughs> I have a loss for work. Where do I look? Is there that one? That's me. Okay. You look at me. Look How at we you. doing? How we feeling? I feel good, man. How do you feel? Great. We had a great weekend, huh? Not together. Oh, I had a topic. Oh, please. Should we just jump right into it? Uh, yeah, why not? Because you, you do all that editing <laughs> magic. I had, a, I had one, at least, that I remember off the top. I have it in my notes. Let me look real quick. We had... That one. Oh! Prayer. Prayer. We had prayer. Now I understand the meaning of church. I get church. Keep the mic there. Remember when you look at me? <sighs> Just go like church. this. Like, like, your neck. like, yeah, I've broken neck. You know what's interesting about podcasts? What? When you have a microphone, you have to be like Batman. You ever seen how Batman turns his... Yeah. Like we have spina bifida. Spina... What? <laughs> Scoliosis? Scoliosis of the of the liver. <laughs> okay, here we go. What topic do you remember? Oh, I wrote one down that I wanted to bring up to see your thoughts on it. Let's go. Let's dive in. Uh, working on your self-worth. Yeah. But staying humble. Yeah. What's the balance between that? And how do you act like you're worth a ton, but stay humble when you talk to people or when you yeah. do things? Well, so let me first go with what I was taught. Right, which is when Tiger wins, Tiger Woods wins the Masters, right? And they're asking him questions, and they're like, uh, "Tiger, on the seventeenth hole, you made birdie. How did you make that incredible shot?" You never see him go, "Oh, gee shucks." Well, you know, I just hit the ball, and it, it happened to you know get the right bounce, and the wind took it, and it went in. He'll look at the reporter and say, "I practiced that shot." 10 million times ever since I was a little boy with my dad. Right. Right? So it's like owning all the work you did. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you and I are very charismatic, polite. And I think if you combine the two, you don't come off arrogant or egotistical, but you're allowed to own your own gifts. That's the balance I want to talk about it's like own, have, helping people own that because i started to do it and it's been great and i've but i took so long because i didn't want to come off egotistical or come off i don't know well you probably had the same thing i like i used to think humility mm -hmm. was the way christopher reeve portrayed clark kent as superman right where are you it's going, still going. Oh, i'm just gonna see you well and we're back <laughs> go ahead so I used to think, oh, it wasn't recording. No, it was good recording. I just wanted to see the time mm. so we know how long it's going. <laughs> uh, I remember thinking humility was the way Christopher Reeve portrayed Clark Kent in the movie Superman, which was, you know, mild-mannered, humble reporter. And, and what he did was he acted less than, dumb, silly, mm -hmm. ridiculous, but he was trying to disguise that he is not the most powerful man in the world. Mm -hmm. So I tried to do that, mm. you know, and what it did was it made me very, it was a, it was false humility, humility, and it was passive aggressive. How like was I, it false humility? Well, I wouldn't let people really know who I am and what I did. Right. And then like, I would show them the family business and mm -hmm. then it would be like, Wham! You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like, oh yeah, I'm that guy. Right. You know what I mean? So, it, it it was false humility because I knew what was coming. I knew mm. that I was gonna wow Be a superhero? them. Superhero. Yeah. 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 So it was it was false. You know, I, I I was I was planning on wowing them. I have a funny story. Go ahead. It reminded me of Clark Kent. I was watching the Sebastian podcast. Sebastian and Pete. They they were cracking up, and he was saying how. You ever, um, he was like uh, mentioning aches and pains to another guy when he was like at some party or something like that. He was saying, like, you ever get like, he's like, my back's acting up. And the guy's like, no, I get nothing. <laughs> and, and, he's like, and he's like, and the guy that he was talking to was like, and I'm 54. And he was like, all of the guys, like, he said, like, I'm supposed to say great or something like that. And he's like, and then <laughs> Sebastian was saying that, I believe, and Pete was like, um, yeah, he's like, I, I want to have some guy time, talk about our aches and pains. I didn't know you were Clark Kent all of a sudden, and it was so funny the way he's, I'll have to show you that. Sebastian but. is the cancel guy that we were talking no, about? No, 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 that's Chris ah. Sebastian's the Italian man of I love that yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So their podcast is amazing. It's kind of like us. Yeah. Yeah. 
We're going to catch up. We're going to catch up. Sebastian, we're coming for you. And we're you. sorry that we passed you so quick. We should probably apologize. Right? Go ahead. Sebastian, <laughs> we're sorry. Yeah. You've worked your ass off. It's been a long career, a hard-working career. We just have the skills. Yeah. And that's how you do it. That's how... You stay humble. You stay <laughs> humble. Stay low-key. <laughs> <laughs> but you own your gifts. Yes. The big part about the owning the gifts that I like is that people want to have the experience and then then feel the the power. But you have to own the power and then you mm. embody it. You know, you have to like act as if you have the power even if you don't feel it in the moment. Sounds sexual. Well, that's how it goes. You mean That's how it is. So wait, you what? You want like even Okay, so say you want an experience. Yeah. And you say when this experience comes, it'll make me feel right. great. You have, have to feel great, and then the experience I comes. I agree. Yeah, we have it backwards. Yeah, so I'm trying to topsy-turvy the universe. Topsy-turvy, the, topsy-turvy that <laughs> motherfucker. But it's true. We have it upside down. Yeah. We have it completely upside down. It's kind of like the God thing, by the way. Not mm-hmm. that I always have to bring God up. Oh, well, it reminded me of the higher reality that you always talk about. Yeah. Because at the higher reality, you, you create it. You don't... Live in this reality, and then you act. You act, and then shapes it. Absolutely. And people want the evidence of God mm-hmm. before believing in it. That's great. That's good. And it just doesn't work like that. And what's cool is that it it's, it doesn't work like that. It works the other way. But it's cool that it works the other way because it's like magical. It's like once you, you yeah. know what else I've heard. No, I'm sorry. No, that's ahead. it. But uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. Good. Um, but the other thing is when you're not a full believer. Mm-hmm. What I have found is every single time that you're trying to make somebody believe, or mm-hmm. not, excuse me, every time you're trying to show that there is a higher reality and that there is a God and there is a higher power, when they want to sign up for it, every coincidence that happens, they just go, oh, it's a coincidence. Right. Like, because they don't believe. Like, you have to believe first, then all right. of a sudden the magic happens. One of my favorite ways, because this is what I learned with you as well, is you can't convince somebody. They have to go no. find it on their own. But what's fun to try to help them, to, for the people that want to try to live in the higher reality, is like help them start to notice the coincidences and just talk about them. Like, really think about how that came to be. Like, the astronomical way this lined up for that to happen to this to happen to happen. It happens sometimes. Like, oh, great. That's a crazy coincidence. And then you start to notice more of them. It's like, how many does it going to take yeah. for you to be like, Ugh. it's not a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like okay, we have a hundred. Well, that should be a, a that should be a vocabulary word. <laughs> it's like okay, this happened. This, what's the mathematical like? The law. I was very logical too. That's what led me to that too. It's like okay, this is literally like statistically impossible. Yet it happened multiple times. What are we doing? While I enjoy these conversations, do you feel that you're constantly thinking, I want the microphone in front of my mouth? No, I'm just a natural dude. Damn. I've been doing it for a while, by the way. I've been always yeah, talking know, on mics. Everybody talking. knows. Everybody knows. Hmm. Because I find myself wanting to, <laughs> to be myself. Yet. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you do instead? How do you be yourself? You go like this? I Yeah, I would feel more... I, I'd feel better about you. I'm going to strap it to your neck so you could just talk with your hands. Well, that's the thing. When we have a studio, you'll have it on the stand and you could just be like this. I can't wait to have a studio. Look, you could talk like this too. And you know that's going to happen. I can have my full hands now. I got freaking crisp audio now. That's pretty sweet. I'll steal this joke from Chris D'Elia. This is respectful. It is respectful. Because I feel at home. Absolutely. If I was all like this, you'd be like, relax, dude. I would, I would feel weird. Right. I want you to feel like you're home. Let's go over your week. How was All your right. week? Um, what did I... It's been a busy week. Tell me. Less sleep than usual. But just, oh, that's big for you. Well, yes, it is. So, How do you feel about that? Good. Okay. Especially because it's like... It's all for good reasons. Like it wasn't, it was like by design, I had extra work to do. I had friends and people to hang out with that I wanted to Mm -hmm. and experiences that are rare, more coincidental that you're like, you got to jump on them. Mm. And yeah, it was just great. So, but I'm excited to get back into like a routine because it's not that it was out of my routine, but it's like you, you can't live in like a fairy tale at all times. Right. But that's what life's about is finding the fairy tale moments. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if I can sign up for that though. Not all the time? Or you want to live in a fairy tale all the time? A designed fairy tale. That's what we're living. You know what? I, oh, remember when you said you don't worry anymore? Tell him real quick. 
Yeah, well, I'm working on that, by the way. <laughs> I've had a few relapses. <laughs> but still, it's a practice. It's still yeah, good. I it never is forgot a it. I never forgot I it. I made a commitment yeah. to stop worrying yeah. because what I realized was as I analyzed my life and all my past behavior, as Steve takes his pants off, <laughs> <laughs> as I analyzed my life and all, his, and all my past behavior, worrying never did anything good for me. So why do I do it? So I made a commitment to stop worrying. Now, I've had a few relapses on that (laughs) where things just pop up and my brain wants to take over and control and play out scenarios that may or may not happen and play chess. But really, it's such a waste of fucking time. And I think the awareness of that you're not going to do it, that when you start worrying, you relapse, you be, you'll, you could say to yourself, I'm worrying right now. Why is that? And then you can tap back into the higher reality and be like, I'm designing my fairy tale. Yeah. I think, I think people have an addiction to worrying. Yeah. Well, oh, you watch a social dilemma, right? No. You didn't? I did not watch the social dilemma. We might have to watch it and then recap it. I, I would love it. that. Okay, so you have to watch it. It's your homework. Fuck. You want to okay. give me homework? Should I watch As Good As It Gets? Y- yes. We want the viewers With to Jack tell us Nicholson. what you, this is the homework for the viewers and listeners. Find a movie that inspires you or that's good for you that you know will help you in that higher reality and think deeper about it and go yes. watch it by next, whenever this airs, a week from when you hear this message. Yeah. That's your homework. That's how we do homework. I love that homework. It's good. I wish Justice League was my homework, but I understand the social dilemma. But have thing. you watched Justice League? Not the new one with Zack oh, Snyder. So maybe that's our homework together. Four hours long, six parts. Live, Adam and Steve. <laughs> <laughs> Black Superman suit. Oh, so I had... Um, what's happening? Oh. Uh, <laughs> so I want to engage with them more. We will, and I think it'll be live, but then the comments, and yeah. when, they, when we blow up, it'll be like yeah. a whole audience, an auditorium, and it'll be like a spectacle, basically. Yeah. I want to break the third wall. Fourth wall. No, 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 no. I know about the fourth wall. But that third wall, I want to break the shit out of it. All right. Yeah. I don't know the walls. Can we go through them? No, I really don't. I think I fucked up the saying. <laughs> <laughs> but I doubled down What's on the third. What's wall one? Me and you? Or we yes. walls two? <laughs> <laughs> what is wall one? But I think you're right. Break the fourth wall. It's but seven. boy, if I'm right, I'm going to... I hope we have the footage of this That's podcast. That's what's great about these things. Because I'll crazy. rub it in. All right, so I want to get back to the worry thing where I said you yeah. stopped worrying because I had a cool realization um, about a similar uh, sentiment, sure. which was, I don't go on vacation anymore. Because your life's a vacation. I love that. I live. And when people say work in, or this, I'm like, I just live. I love that. Because I really don't. Because yeah. I, it's my choice. And that's a big one is that like, if I want to go to the beach, if I want to take a vacation, it's always a choice. If you're busy, that's a choice. Yep. If you have work to go to, that's a choice. If you want to live in a higher reality, you make the choices. Yeah. You know what I learned, which you would think maybe at 44 years old, I would have known. You're looking sharp, kid. <laughs> 44? 44. People thought we were brothers, dude. Twins. Get the fuck out of here. They said twins. Nobody said that. They said Adam and Steve. Who, who, which, which one's Steve? Which one's Adam? <laughs> you know what one guy said? What did one guy say? Siamese twins. Siamese twins. Yeah. So at 44 years old, Attached I can't even take that compliment. Okay, sorry. I can't even take Attached it. Attached it to balls. It's so far out there. Far out, dude. Um, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> what were we talking about? I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'll get us back. I love this game. Here we go. Vacations. Yes. I have it. That was it? Oh. Okay. So at, at 44 years old, you would think that I would have known Keep this. Keep going. Just double checking. We're good, we're good, we're good. Sweet, sweet. At 44 years... At 44 years old, <laughs> you think I would have known this. Yeah, but you don't know shit. Okay, I, so. I, that's true. A, I don't know anything. I don't know anything that's happening. But right now, at this moment, I'm living my dream, but I'm working harder than I've ever worked before, Right. which is weird. I feel the same way, actually. You know what I mean? Like, I thought... Maybe in my dream state or, or when I had this vision yeah, that, I, I don't know, maybe I thought it would be not easier. I knew, it, I knew that there would be a challenge. I just, maybe I wasn't aware 
of how much consistent hard work it is to live your dream. Yes. I think that was something I realized as well, sort of recently of like, it's not like live your dream and then it ends. No. It's like, how do you maintain the dream? Whew. That's a good one. That's a great, and I had the same feeling. And what I think what's the only difference though of when you're living the dream is that you, you're so motivated to keep it going. Even though you're working harder, right. it's like the, the, the reasoning behind the, the work ethic gets more fulfilling instead of like, um, you have to do it, you know? And you know what I think you just, this is what you made me think of. I hope people actually really do li- watch yeah, this and listen to this. somebody does. <laughs> Always <laughs> one person. Is that I, when I was running the family business, which I was very good at, but wasn't my purpose, wasn't my dream, right? I would be very, very disciplined and committed to certain things like waking up early, prayer meditation, all the stuff you and I do, training early, all this stuff. But that stuff was more... I, I needed it selfishly because I wasn't fulfilled at work, okay? Mm. Now, that stuff is fueling my work, and I start realizing, oh, this is what The Rock is all about. Like, mm-hmm. we all look at him like, how do you do it? Well, he's having the time of his fucking life. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yes. He's yes, having yes, yes. the time of his fucking life. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he needs that anchor. He needs that training because he's about to go to a movie set. He's yeah. very happy on the movie set, yeah. but he needs to work also to, to be with his kids. He loves being with his kids. Yes. You know what I mean? And, he, and, and it all builds. Yeah. So for me, before, it was a way of relief, right. prayer, meditation, exercise, right. all the things that you and I talk about and preach about. It was a, way, it was a form of relief right. from the daily grind, but it, wasn't a, it was a grind because I, I wasn't fulfilled in what I'm doing. Right. Now, this is my fuel. Yes. I love that. That's amazing. That's how I feel as well. Is like the things you get to accomplish because you do the work fulfill you and it's just a ne- never ending. It's a never cycle. ending. It's a great. It's never ending. It's a loop. It's a double entendre. If I, it's a if, double if I, if entendre. I say. <laughs> if we throw the rock in, isn't that a triple entendre? The rock. Well, yeah. Well, we could throw anybody in. No, the rock's a good one. But I had the rock already. Yeah. And I want to be the next person to use a triple entendre after Jay Z. Do you think you'll talk to The Rock on a podcast within the I next think five we, years? I think we would have a great time talking to Imagine him. Imagine his big ass sitting right here. <laughs> We're yeah, both like one fucking. I'd be so intimidated. <laughs> Giant. Can I touch your? Can I touch your arm? Are you on keto? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think we'll meet him. I really do, actually. You still jerk off? Yeah. <laughs> And we're back. <laughs> I don't know how you beat your dick with yeah. those fucking arms. Anyway, back to uh, Adam. <laughs> I'm going to put a picture of the rock here. Yeah. Oh, my God. Dude, you've got a problem. Anyway. <laughs> what would you really ask him if he was here? Um, one question, like if you on the podcast, one question for the rock, well, not just one, but like, what would you really want to talk? You sit, get, to, you get to spend a 30 minutes, an hour. With okay. Them. All right. My first question would be now that you're this guy, right? What is the, explain to me what the money feels like. Cause I got to tell you nothing he does seems like he does it for a profit motive. I feel like he does everything from his heart from inspiration, yeah. and it brings him the money. And yeah. at one time, this guy was so broke, he actually called his company Seven Bucks Productions because he was down to his last seven bucks. Wow. So now that I believe he's had, he has that totally figured out, mm-hmm. the financial part, does he, is there anything that he actually ever does for money, or is it all because he just loves what right. he's doing and it makes money? Yes, and that's another flip when we were talking about with the higher reality. Yeah. When you do stuff that's worth a lot of energy, the money comes in a form of energy or energy comes in the form of money. Yeah. So instead of going for the money and then doing the things that give you energy, do the things that give you energy and the money comes. Yeah. That's a good flip. That's, so that would be the main thing. Like I would, I would really want to know, is there one thing that you've done? This, something's burning. That was a fly. Okay. Is there one thing that you've done in this past year, let's say. Is this boring you? No, 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 I'm thinking. Oh. I'm thinking what I <laughs> <laughs> That you've done 
only and specifically for the financial reward. What if he's like... <laughs> what if he's like all of it? He's like, all the fucking movies. Yeah, yeah man. I hate it. <laughs> yes. All of it. <laughs> Training, <laughs> the diet. <laughs> it fucking sucks, but I love being rich. <laughs> it's all... Oh my Show God. me the money. Hold what you, on. Breather. I would ask him. I want to know his weird hobbies. Like we know he trains. We know he does acting. We know he's a good guy. Does he do anything we wouldn't expect? Like would he? Like does he play the ukulele or a porn addiction? That too. What if he's severe, but it, and he's like, but I'm doing okay with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I'm doing Probably. Fine. He's like, it keeps me sane. <laughs> would you, t- would you advise him to stop or would you be like, keep doing, you're, you're doing Whatever fine. you're doing, yeah. do, it, do it until, you know what I mean? Like. Burn it out. Hey, you know, there is something about if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right? Because mm-hmm. it's kind of like this. Not everybody that drinks has an alcohol problem. Right. You know, like you had a glass of wine last night. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think for one second about alcoholism? No. Right. People that talk to me about, oh, I'm doing this and this and this, usually already that awareness means there's something that we have to look at. Right. So one of the biggest lessons I learned from your book and just from you was that the the powerless feeling, noticing like when you're powerless, like when you you say you're going to do something and it doesn't happen or you say one and you have more over and over again, it's like... At one point, you're just at some point, you have to be like, I can't. Why, why can't I do this? It's the worst feeling in the world. Having said that, the flip side that a lot of people don't look at is once you actually admit that mm-hmm. powerlessness. This is it. This is tapping in. That's when you get all of the power. You know, because you're relying on something higher. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where many of us in uh, recovery talk about God and faith and higher realities and spirituality over and over and over because we all know, all of us, that we could not stop, period, period. And then all of a sudden you do something like get on your knees and say a prayer, something like that, and it's removed. So you, you feel powerless and then you get all the power in the world. Yeah. Which is huge. The only time I'm powerless again is if I put a drink in my mouth. And there are people, this is what I'm going to say, by the way, in this podcast is mm-hmm. controversial mm-hmm. and where I, where I go. We only recovery. do controversy That's on this. It. We keep it on the That's edge. That's it. The Holocaust, 9 yeah. 11, and this state. We're getting to it. <laughs> is, you know, some people will say that you're powerless over people, places, and things, which I don't buy at all. Mm-hmm. And my teachers don't buy at all. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I mean, like, if you and I go walk down there with an Uzi right now yeah. at the pool, we can knock Are we them powerless out. over people? No, I can get, I can knock them out. Easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so we're not powerless over people. We're certainly not powerless over the place. Mm-hmm. You know, but some people believe that. And I think it almost What would be an example that they are, though? Because I could feel like that some people could be powerless over people. I, I think where they're going with the whole thing is like um, somebody upsets you. Something happens. Oh, like uh, you really can't. Stop thinking. Kind of like what you and I went through in the whole... People pleasing thing? Not, well, that's good for you and I, too. But in the whole um, metrograde thing. Oh, retrograde. Right? Retrograde. Not metrograde. <laughs> that's a combo of the race factory yeah, and yeah, the yeah. planets, dude. I exactly. don't know where you're going. Retrograde thing. It's like you feel powerless. So you're like, you can't, I, you, you, you can't stop the AC yeah. from... Right, you're, right, right, right. So I think that's where their intentions are when they say mm-hmm. it. But still, there's not, it's not true because you're, you're capable of calling the guy that can fix it. Which is? The maintenance man? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say something profound like the higher power. Oh. The powerless oh. over it. No. Nah. Nah. <laughs> Fucking <Nah>. maintenance guy. <laughs> oh. Well, we're almost at half an hour. All right. What should we, what should we wrap it for the week? People are listening to this. How, um, do we, how do we have them have a good week? Or wherever, whenever they're listening to this, what's the last thing we should let them? Do you want to talk to them about your nutrition or anything sure. like that? No, I don't know. No, um, you had good nutrition. Them, huh? You had good nutrition. Yeah, I had great nutrition this week. New I, feel like I, I feel like you and I are in a zone. Like yeah, we, we're in a zone lately. What zone would you call it? Green zone, the orange, uh, yeah, orange I, theory. I think green, orange think theory, right? Like, like Matthew McConaughey, we're in a green, green lights, light. Maybe hit him with that. 
cool. Always yeah. cool. All right. Uh, all right. All right. <laughs> That was good. <laughs> That's a motherfucker I'd like for us to meet. Yes. Let's name some other people. So Matthew McConaughey, what would you ask him? Oh, I don't even know where I'd begin I'd be like, with what's him. What's up, man. dude? Yeah. What are you, what's, what's the deal? Yeah. Was, you know what I'd ask him? The fuck? The way he's so profound. Yeah. What I'd want to know. <laughs> 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 Come on. Was, was this someone always the vision? Was this someone like his future self? Something about, like... You know, one time he say, even said he wanted to be a preacher. Like, yeah. Wh- he's the one guy in Hollywood that I would be like, oh, he, oh, he influences thought. That makes sense. Hmm. That makes sense. That, this is the guy that I thought would do it. Right. And you're saying, does he, did he see that for himself always? Maybe, yeah. Like, was, are, is he comfortable going there and saying, like, did you, did you see yourself kind of going on this type of platform yeah. before it happened? Because I, I believe, yes. Like, what, what inspired him to write that book? What inspired him to always go into these monologues? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? What like, is that? Yeah. Like, I think something was kind of calling him that he, he, it was going to be deeper. His message was going to be deeper than acting. Yeah. That's so weird. What would you ask him? Something similar to that. I'd be like, um, I might ask him what would he would tell maybe someone in my position with that wants to do acting, wants to do these different yeah. things. What you would... I like speaking to all, like with this new era too with podcasting videos. Everybody's got a camera in their house. Everybody's virtual. The social media, you know, because he did it all writing, yeah. and then he came up with this insane book that was his memoirs. That's like so powerful, right? And through the it's acting, amazing. so what would he do now? Like if he would, if he was born in this time, yeah. or like just like in this era with podcasts. He, imagine his podcast. No, he's he's a got podcast? a YouTube channel. Does he? Just came out. Uh, how do I get it? I think he's going YouTube and. Like, subscribe. Huh? <laughs> like you guys are doing yeah. right now for the Adam and Steve pod. Well, um, I would want, so I would definitely want to meet Dwayne Johnson. Mm-hmm. I would definitely want to meet Sylvester Stallone mm. because of what he, he meant to me as a kid. Imagine I'd want to meet Michael Jordan. You know, but not to sound tacky, I still would want to just have lunch with Dion over everyone. Really? That's amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. He fuels me. That's amazing. You know, that's more like meeting somebody and getting getting excited. Um, but you know, sometimes they say if you meet your heroes, you know, you're gonna be let down. Wow. But with Dion, you know, what you see is what you get, and you can't know, wait that, for you guys to have a podcast. Yeah, well, all of us, you know. But the, it, that's why I, and I enjoy him, and I would want to emulate a man like that. You know, when you meet him, he 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 delivers in every area. Spirituality, relationships, music, of course, knowledge, love, humility. I mean, he just, he delivers. You know, what if you meet, what if we meet somebody and we're like, you know, I would hate to meet Jordan and be like, well, he was a dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is the Look, case. Looked up to worship this guy yeah. since I was a kid. <laughs> you know All I mean? that. I would be like, what a waste of time. You know? <laughs> Imagine, oh my I'm God. Buying Adidas yeah. for now on. <laughs> Next 50 years. Do you have a favorite brand? Um, no, not really. I, I do like these. What are these things I'm wearing now? On or something? These running Running sneakers? ons? Running ons are something really like nice. That? Um, on runnings? Something? Yeah, something like that. I, but not really. I mean, I do love the idea of Jordan brand. Yeah. But I think I like, I, I don't think I necessarily am talking about the sneakers. I think I'm talking about what it symbolizes. Right. That's what I like about brands. It's just really interesting because I'm looking at them more when I, do things or sports wise because I'm like I kind of want to I like the idea of like sponsorship or but it's weird how they all have their own little niche or what they're doing I don't know brands are just fascinating you're in the, yeah do you have a favorite brand? I mean you're the no dunker. I don't know but I just was like, like do you have a favorite shoe to Duncan Nike Nike's Asics? probably but I love the Kobe's but those are Nike but yeah I hope and that's how good. we're gonna end yeah. it <laughs> yeah uh, all right uh, let's wrap it up what should we say well, I'd like to end on a happier note. Let's end in the higher reality. Higher reality. Where Kobe's at. Yeah, where he's at. Where and, Kobe's at. He's and how in a do better they, place. From this moment, how do they act like they're in the higher reality? Give them a step. Um, look, from this moment on, to mm-hmm. act in the higher reality, I want you to try to see the good in everything. In everything. You know, if it's raining, the plants needed it. Thank you. Something like that. That's great. You know, just try to try to see the good. 
I love it. And then that, you know, we'll build on, you and I can build on that. What would you suggest? Think of the, your higher self, who you want to be. If you want to meet these people, like we mentioned, if you want to do big things, who think do of you want to meet? Did I reciprocate that question? No, but it doesn't matter. I like those people. Matthew McConaughey's huge. Huge. Rogan. Rogan. Would be awesome. Great. Chris D'Elia, even, I don't, forget the scandal. I just want people that really have inspired me. Um, who else inspired me? The Rob Deerdeck is a huge one. I just, yeah. his energy is so similar of like his brain and the way he lives. I don't know. I can't think right now, but those are a few. Yeah. I would, I would enjoy talking to Joe Rogan for yeah. sure. He seems just fascinating. Yeah. Um, who's like- that? Who's that? Um, Elon Musk, like I just kind of. Yeah. I don't know if I'd want to like hang out with him, but I think I, I like I get my fix when he talks to Joe Rogan. Yeah, but yeah. I'd rather watch him talk to Joe Rogan yeah. than to me. Yes. Because it would be more like a genius speaking yeah. to Rocky Balboa. Do you think Elon Musk thinks about the higher reality? Like lives in it? Or is spiritual or has a faith? You know what? I think <sighs> I would compare Elon Musk to someone maybe like my dad. In which, you know, if you ask, talk to my dad, he's not the most spiritual, open God guy. But he does behave in a way that shows you that he's, he's really open to that. Like he rides his horses and he's out in Mother Nature and he, you know, he loves animals. He almost like gets it without... He gets it yeah. without contemplating it, thinking about it, paying tribute to right. it. You know, wanting to get closer to it. He mm-hmm. just kind of is like, you know what I mean? And I think Elon Musk, something the way his mind works, it, it, granted, I don't think he's thinking about a higher reality, but he's thinking, he's definitely elevated. Right. Right? I mean, I don't think like that. Right. <laughs> you know? I wasn't like, hey, Steve. Oh, is that, did that all? You're good. No, 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 just a couple hey, minutes. Hey, Steve, you know what we should do? We should uh, invent a car that doesn't use gasoline. I mean, that wasn't on my yeah. mind crazy you don't want to know what was on my mind and that's it folks yeah. How are we <laughs> i do have one last question sure what are we doing i don't i don't even understand Fuck it. i don't even i don't even get you know what i mean what do i do with this hand nothing say goodbye